Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. This is Talking Point. My name is Faraz Patel. Jazakla so much for staying with us. Of course, with this week leading up to Women's Day on the 9th of August, we have seen a massive amount of female representatives within the National Assembly. Of course, the elections have sparked the Government of National Unity with the African National Congress and its nine partners. But of course, we have seen new oppositions come within the frame and the, un, the official opposition party to the uh, government of national unity is none other than the MK party. And the interesting fact is that there are Muslim representatives, Muslim female representatives within the MK party. And it kind of takes away the assertion from a sort of traditional or tribal political landscape that the MK party was seen only for the Zulu-speaking compatriots of South Africa. Yes, there are different uh, multiracial groups within the MK party, and I'd like to welcome one of them, uh, Miriam Mohammed, who is a member of parliament for the MK party. Miriam, assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and jazakla so much for joining us here. Wa alaikum assalamu rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, it's an honor to be to, here today on your channel. Mm -hmm. I'm Honorable Mariam Bibi Mohammed. <coughs> I'm privileged to serve as a member of parliament for the MK party overseas with mm. the MK party, like you said. As a Muslim woman, my journey has been guided by the principles of Islam, which mm. emphasize justice, compassion, and service to the communities. Gee. Uh, Mariam, <laughs> I, I want to touch on it because, I mean, I mentioned now at the start that, you know, many people have... Uh, you know, asserted the MK party as, you know, a, a sort of party only for, quote unquote, the Zulu speaking, uh, you know, population within our country. So, I mean, how refreshing is it that, you know, there is a Muslim representatives within that party and ultimately being in the National Assembly? Oh, definitely. That narrative is completely wrong, as mm. you can see. Um, well, we have two Muslim females, myself mm. and Honorable Saira Abadir. And we have um, two Indian males from mm. Durban, Visbin Reddy and Honorable Roy Mudley. Mm. We've got uh, the King of the so uh, Koya and the Sun, uh, Glenn Tybosh, and we have Honorable Wesley Douglas from Western Cape. Mm. So it's not only uh, as it's people predominantly think it's a Zulu party. No, no, that narrative is completely off. Mariam, mm. let's talk about the role of women in politics. I mean, you know, when we go to 1956, when we go to, you know, the woman that marched to the union buildings, there's been major strides. You know, we're looking, this is going now 68 years since that actually happened. Uh, how is the, the, the role of women in politics evolved and really changed so that individuals like yourself can have a seat at the table in making key decisions for our country? No. A woman uh, in modern day politics play crucial roles as leaders today, policy makers, and we advocate we advocates for change. Mm. Our, a woman's perspectives brings diversity and inclusivity to political discourse, mm. ensuring that the needs and rights of all segments of society are well represented. Mm. Women have proven to be effective in leadership roles, often prioritizing social justice, education healthcare, family welfare, and critical, which are, all these are critical for a holistic development. Gee, and, and I think it ultimately has, you know, changed so much since the dawn of democracy. I mean, when you look at, you know, the first uh, parliament in, in, in democratic South Africa, of course, there were very few females that were there. Now, all of a sudden, you know, you have the opportunity to really be one of those select few and when I say select few, you know, the select few in terms of really bringing representation to parliament from a female perspective. So, you know, how much has that changed? And I mean, how much of pride does it give you to really say, I am now part of history in the seventh administration? Alhamdulillah, there's actually in our, um, currently, I, mm. uh, I think we are about 43% women in cabinet, mm. in National Assembly. So it's, it's growing phenomenally. and. Uh, 
it's interesting there's a woman from all walks of life different mm. nationalities different you know there's a diverse group of women and it's interesting to see that we have been at the fo you know women have always been the forefront for at of grassroots movements mm. mobilizing communities fostering political awareness and uh, you know what so since the dawn of democracy women have been instrumental in transforming the political landscape by advocating for gender equality and social justice and human rights so it's you know we've been given the platform where we can promote equality and mm. inclusiveness Mariam, let's let's touch on, of course, you know, um, from a Muslim perspective. I mean, from a female Muslim perspective. Uh, obviously, it, it's yourself. You've mentioned Saira Abadar, who is also a member of Parliament uh, within the yes. ANC. You've got Fasia Hassan in the Democratic Alliance. You've got uh, uh, Hasina, Hasina, who's also Hasina mm -hmm. Ismail, who's part there. Uh, if I've missed out on anyone, I mean, you could go ahead and maybe, you know, add to that. Um, Obviously, when you look across the world, you know, female Muslim representation is few and from maybe in the United States. You could put in Rashida Tlaib or Ilham Umar um, in England. If I stand in the United Kingdom, I think there's one or two female Muslim representations. Uh, how unique is South Africa really in just allowing this shaping of previously disadvantaged uh, females like yourself to really be at the forefront? of important decision making where you can now sit within parliament and say i have a say in changing key legislations within the country look as a muslim female south african mm. muslim female <coughs> firstly like you said we are we proud to see there's so much increase in muslim mm. and female representation in national assembly but this progress reflects the strides we are making towards a more inclusive and representative democracy. It highlights the importance of diversity in leadership and decision-making processes, ensuring that the voices of all communities are heard and respected. Mm. And, and I think that's important, the fact that you can allow this opportunity for there to be more voices. I mean, that's important, isn't it, that you oh, now can, can give, allow the uh, people to say, listen, I'm your representative, you chose me from the constituency, and I can now make those decisions within Parliament that can affect your uh, life as a community wherever you are. 100%. As an MP, you must remember, mm. we are able to address the challenges faced by women in public and private sectors. Mm. <laughs> we, we can advocate for legislation and we promote gender equality uh, we protect, you know, we can enforce the policies that protect women's rights. This includes enforcing equal pay for equal work, preventing gender-based violence, ensuring uh, like maternity, family leave, promoting women's participation in leadership roles. We push for policies that provide support and resources for women entrepreneurs and small businesses. This platform has really uh, you know what, been very remarkable if, for us to allow for future females to mm. enter politics. After the break, I continue my conversation with Maria Mohammed, who is a member of parliament from the MK party. Do stay tuned. Welcome back. Uh, this is a two-part conversation that we are having with two different uh, members of parliament. Of course, later on, I'm going to be speaking with Nobuntu Schlauzer Webster, who is a member of parliament for Build One South Africa. Currently, I'm in conversation with Maria Mohammed from the MK party. Uh, Maria, uh, just before we went to the break, I wanted to ask on it, because time was against us, with regards to the pride that you feel to be a Muslim representing. I mean, there's so many of our Muslim sisters that, you know, would look at Maria Mohammed and say, look, I want to be like her when I grow up. You know, I want to be a politician. I want to be somebody who can affect change. I mean, how much of pride does it fill you with that, you know, you can serve the Ummah, but you can also serve the country at the same time? You know, for, uh, for us, um, as a Muslim woman in parliament, 
I'm proud to stand on the shoulders of the many trailblazing women who have come before me. And I'm committed to paving the way for future generations, like I said previously. Remember, our faith encourages us to seek knowledge, justice, and equality. And it is our duty to ensure that these values are upheld in all aspects of life, including leadership. Women bring unique perspectives and strengths to the table. Mariam, it is my hope yeah. that no, through continue. dialogue and action, mm. you know, we can see more women stepping into leadership roles, making significant impacts in their fields. Let us continue to support each other and uplift each other, breaking down barriers mm. and challenging stereotypes. And um, we work, you know, to, towards a future where everyone, regardless of gender, can, uh, uh, can thrive and lead. <coughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, Miriam, uh, when you look at women, there's tons of challenges within the public and the private sector, whether it's, you know, the blocking of uh, opportunities to, you know, get a promotion, whether jobs are just not being given for women. When you look at the uh, unemployment statistics, you know, so many of that 40 or 32.9% really is down to uh, women not being employed. Mm -hmm. Now, you sit within the National Assembly, you're going to be debating, you know, in Parliament, you're going to be debating on the portfolio committees. Uh, what is it that you feel will be necessary to bring in terms of changing key legislation? Some of the foremost priorities to address challenges faced by women, mm -hmm. they would include um, part of the is ensuring equal opportunities now for females, in, in, not only in, um, in education and in employment. We must provide accessible and affordable healthcare services, including reproductive health. Women, uh, and uh, we must support economic empowerment initiatives for women. That would be some of the foremost priorities to address because these are the challenges being faced by women. Mm -hmm. And it also, don't forget, we need stringent laws and policies mm -hmm. against gender-based violence as well. Yeah, I want to touch on gender-based violence because mm -hmm. obviously that's been a scourge within the South African society mm -hmm. for so many years. Of course, we look back to 2019 when the murder of so many teenage young uh, females had occurred. So the murder of so many female young women had occurred. I mean... How important is it that these laws, of course, the president has signed the gender-based violence bill into act, but, you know, it's now important that there has to be action that's coming also from, you know, the National Assembly, from legislatures. So from your, from your point of view now, how important is it that the fight against gender-based violence is taken head on? That's, that's key. That's imperative. Like, mm. That's first and foremost on our agenda. You know, because like you said, it's on the increase. Mm. And we see so many young women, uh, you know, being victimized. And you know what? Even suicide amongst our youth is not like females because they cannot live in this environment. Like uh, they can't face the challenges. Today's youth ca cannot handle the pressure of society. So we will be in a better situation. We will make it, you know, it will be, we are in that position now where we can make those changes possible, like we can enforce those uh, policies. And like you said, there is a lot of other females on in parliament. So it's not, a, it, the support structure is great. We all are, generally all females that I have spoken to in parliament, we all are on the same page. Everyone mm. is same policy, same views, mm. despite the party you represent. Yeah, and I and I have to agree there. I mean, obviously, there is a different difference between all the parties, but I think yes. when it comes yes. to fixing South Africa, I think everyone is definitely on the same page. Uh, Miriam, uh, when it comes I, to women's issues, yes, we yeah, all on the same page. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, I, I agree. Of course, uh, international relations, I know you're talking about it outside of, uh, uh, obviously, this discussion, of course, there's going to be differences with regards to that. Uh, yes. Miriam, uh, I don't know which portfolio uh, committees you're going to be sitting on. Maybe you can elaborate on that. But whichever ones you are going to be sitting on, I mean, what are some of the challenges that you're going to want to address, especially with regards to it facing women and the challenges that they face? 
Well, uh, the, portf- uh, the portfolio committee that I am on mm. is uh, on home affairs. Mm. And uh, home affairs, when, when you hear the, the word home affairs, you know, you, know, you just hear home yes. affairs, it already, <laughs> it just rings bells. People got to say when they hear that I'm representing home affairs, I get 100 complaints. Please, Mary, you've got to do this, you've got to mm. do that. People are generally, it's the same, whether you're male or female, it's the same stress and frustrations people are facing. So, interestingly enough, we are on recess at the moment, but uh, I won't go back to Parliament after recess. We are going to Home Affairs in Pretoria for oversight strategic visit for a week, and we'll be able to assess firsthand for ourselves what the situation is. And there's a lot of emails that I have received and complaints from public sector. Mm. And uh, we'll be hopefully, given the platform that I am in, I'll be able to take this to the minister and we would try and change it. Mm. Mariam, you are part of the official opposition uh, yes. within the National Assembly. So, of course, the responsibilities don't get any easier. It, it even gets more difficult for you sitting there and really trying to hold the executive account. I mean, how do you plan as you know the member of the official opposition to hold the executive to account and to really play your part within being uh, a member of the official opposition? As a member of the official opposition, it's crucial to hold the executive to account. You know, to ensure, we got to ensure transparency, accountability, good governance. Uh, This involves now obviously scrutinizing government actions, policies, the spending, to prevent, by doing so, we will prevent corruption and misuse of power. By holding the executives accountable, we can ensure that government remains responsive to the needs of the people and uphold democratic principles and the rule of law, inshallah. Inshallah. I mean, Maria, shukran so much for joining us here on uh, Talking Point. We really do appreciate it. All the best. Uh, as you, of course, embark as a member of parliament. We really appreciate it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And jazakallah for having me. Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's an absolute pleasure. That's uh, Maria Mohammed, MK party member of parliament. Yeah, so the beauty of uh, South Africa is that, of course, with our democracy, and even though we've got, uh, you know, the stake on it being more of traditional or tribal politics, the MK party was, of course, seen as being one of that to try and, you know, get the predominantly Zulu vote that was lost within the uh, ANC. You know, the vote that was there for the ANC has now, of course, shifted towards the MK party. And it's good to see that there are different representatives of different race groups. Of course, you heard Mariam saying, Saira Abadar herself, female Indians, Muslims. There's, of course, uh, Roy Naidu, there's uh, Vizvan Reddy that are also part of the uh, uh, MK party. So it's beautiful to see that these parties have different uh, 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 race groups that are representing, you know, uh, in the National Assembly. And we can only hope that more of this happens, of course, especially with the MK being a new party. After the break, I'll be speaking to Nobuntu Shlaza Webster from Build One South Africa. Of course, she is the deputy leader. She's also the member of parliament for them. She did run uh, for the candidacy of the Khao Teng Premier. So we'll be talking to her about uh, the importance of women within the National Assembly and the role they're going to be playing really in the representation of females. Do stay tuned. We'll be back after this break. (music) 